So these vines are going to be going into their fourth leaf this year. So fourth season, we got a little bit of crop off of these semion vines last year, but the drought really affected young vines, especially last year, just given how um, shallow the root system is still um, and how dry the surface of the ground was when things started to grow last spring. Um, so um, we're expecting these to be in uh, close, closer to full production this year, maybe half production. Um, but from a training perspective, they're, they're just about established. Um, these are being trained out in a bilateral GEO. Um, so that means we're going to have uh, a cane on each side of the vine um, and, and then a replacement spur for each one of those canes. So when we go to look at this vine, um, the training has been done properly. So what you see here are these two spurs that were left. Um, and they were left in a particular orientation so that um, the first shoot is on the bottom and the second shoot is on the top. You can see that for both sides. So the first, you here we want the first shoot to be lower and the second shoot to be um, above. And then last year they put out this cane just for the purpose of fruit for last year. So you can see on this cane that the growth was not really strong. Um, the shoots coming off of the canes here are like, we're a little weak. So that tells us that this year we don't want to push this vine too much harder than it was uh, pushed last year. We expect there to be better vigor as the vine gets um, more mature and we have more rain, but it certainly signals that we don't want to press it too hard. So the plan would be to put out a similar single cane or a little bit longer, but I don't want to be putting out two canes yet. Uh, just because that would be too many buds for this vine to handle. Um, so the first step on this vine is actually to cut off the cane from last year. That was just temporary and for the purpose of get, getting fruit last year. <clears throat> so that's the first step. <clears throat> but you want to look at that cane to get an idea of how you want to prune for this year. Um, so now the next step would be to look at our two positions. And the first thing is we want to choose our, um, our spurs, how we're going to prune our spurs for next year. So while typically you would just do a two bud spur, um, here we want to pay attention actually to the orientation of the bud because we want next year to again have this uh, first shoot on the bottom, second shoot on the top. <clears throat> so here it's easy because the first bud on this shoot first clear bud is below. So this is would be an ideal shoot. So I just prune it to a two bud spur there. So next year, this will be the lower bud here will be the spur for next year. The upper bud will be the cane. Um, so like for this year, again, this is a potential cane for this year. This is the spur. Next year, we will do the exact same thing. Um, so on this side, similarly, this, this uh, spur is a little trickier because it's, we would say, inverted. So the first bud is on top. The second clear bud is on bottom. Um, so in this case, we have two choices. We could either prune to three buds <clears throat> like this. And then when we sucker, we'll leave the lower shoot as the first one, the upper shoot as the second one and remove the shoots closer to the crown here. Um, the drawback of that is you've allowed the vine to grow quite a bit, though this is fairly reasonable. The other option would be to cut it real short, and then you have this bud and then this basal bud that would be um, your option. So here it's either a one bud spur, or a two bud spur are your options. If you print it to a one bud spur, this basal bud will push. Um, but you know these shoots will be very close together. So because this inner node between the first bud and the base is really short and the second inner node is not too long, it's not a big problem to allow the vine to grow about an inch and a half here. Um, so once you have those spurs, then like I said, we only want one cane this year. So I'm just gonna choose arbitrarily, you know, the stronger of the two canes, these ones are fairly equal. So I'm gonna make this cut <clears throat> not too close to the spur we're leaving. We're gonna leave a little bit of space there to allow for dieback. 
Um, we don't want the dye back from this wound to go into the trunk of the vine. And then this shoot uh, pruned to vigor. So cutting it to where it's uh, the diameter is adequate um, will be the cane for next year. So that essentially will be arched over like this and tied. And that is the vine for next season. So big picture for this vine. The reason why we prune it like this is because <clears throat> When we prune it this way intentionally, every time we cut off these canes, which is a fairly large cut, um, that is on top of the vine. Um, whereas if you follow the sap all the way up the trunk, like follow the trunk, there won't be ever any wounds coming from the trunk to the future arms of this vine. So the goal is to have uninterrupted flow of sap um, all the way from the trunk out to these arms. Um, and then all the scar tissue created by pruning will be isolated to the top of the vine. The problem with not being intentional and like mixing and, you know, taking canes from the bottom and then canes from the top is you end up making cuts all over the place, which function as clogs in the plumbing of the vine. So by being intentional, we'll build a vine that never um, has those sort of inhibitions and should have a lot more uh, vigor and evenness and growth as it as it ages.